There wasn't much to cheer about in the early days of the war. Wave upon wave of Japanese overwhelmed our people, destroyed our outposts. It was a time of retreat and defeat. You and I are professionals. If the manager says, sacrifice, we lay down a bunt and let somebody else hit the home runs. We know all about those destroyers out of commission tied up around San Diego. We could use them here, but they're not around. They won't be. Our job is to lay down that sacrifice. That's what we were trained for. And that's what we'll do. Understand? Yes, sir. Let's go, boys. Glad. Yeah. We're moving out again. It's too bad we can't quit retreat and make a stand this time. Yes, it is too bad. Well, we've already moved half the way down the Badan Peninsula. We can't back up much for now without getting our feet wet, we can. Your host, Louise Fletcher. How indignant, how confident everyone felt at first. How dare they attack us? That didn't last long. But looking back, even now, it's easy to forget just how bad things were early in the war. The Germans had taken all of Europe and were rolling ahead in Russia. The Japanese were advancing in the Philippines and threatening Australia, the last Allied stronghold in the Pacific. It was the darkest time of the war. Everyone hungered for something to lift the spirits, and audiences looked to the movies for reassurance and for inspiration. One headline caught our attention. It was a story about the courage of a small group of American army nurses trapped on Bataan and enduring hard How many of you was down there? <laughs> if you do not speak, we will throw you out. There are 11 of us. We're all women. We're unarmed. Come up with your hands over your head. Come on, girl. Newsreels showing the surrender of Corregidor angered and frustrated us. Somehow we had to let off steam, and the movies gave us away with some vivid name calling about the enemy. Oh, you yellow belly, dirty, stinking, slimy pigs! Till I ran up against you, Nazi was just a word in a newspaper to me. Now it's another way to spell cockroach. You are very fortunate that we respect the Geneva Convention. Otherwise, I would have you shot. Right now, all of you. Better know right now those no-tailed baboons out there, Richie Bon Jozu. All I want to do is get me a chap. Just one chap. Where are you, gangsters? Come on up and get a load of that scrap metal you sold us. Your mother was a turtle, your father was a snake, and you're a... First, you made him forget that you was a German officer. Then you killed him because he was one. Because he was dead. Because he was one of you. Lousy crowd swine! And the fate of Pearl Harbor will be the fate of all so-called free democracies. The pattern of our life is freedom. And it's in our blood, giving us the kind of courage that you and your gang never dreamed of. And in the end, it's that pattern of freedom that's going to make guys like you wish you had never been born. That's all, brother. flag of surrender was hoisted on the bloody heights of Bataan this afternoon. The Times called for heroes, and one man, perhaps more than any other, became Hollywood's symbol of the rough, tough, fearless fighting man, as American as a Rocky Mountain, John Wayne. Where's the sergeant? He's here. Well, what do you know? My name is Stryker, Sergeant John M. Stryker. 
You're going to be my squad. A rifle squad. Three of us have seen action. Corporal Dunn, Charlie Bass, and myself. You're going to learn from us. You can't learn the easy way, you'll learn the hard way. I'd make a thrust. What, without a scabbard? You heard me. You mean this way? Yeah, like this. You get the idea? This is where we separate the men from the boys. These guys rate arrest. Nobody rates arrest out here. Engine room! Give me all you got! Hang on! Jigsaw, commencing attack. Hurt the elbow. You belong in the hospital, that arm. I'll go to the hospital when I get back. If you want to lose that arm, you better go now. Put some iodine on it and wrap it up. You better lie down and take it easy. You've got a temperature of 103. So I've heard. You Navy boys always run about two degrees above normal. Must be that time you spend at sea. What is your rank? Second lieutenant. Well, I'm a JG, so watch your language. Despite your gold braid, you don't tell us. We tell you. So lie down. Unfasten your pants. What? Unfasten your pants. Unfasten your pants. Get a message off to Pearl. Have taken two torpedoes. Fill in our position. Extent of damage unknown. We'll advise. Great radio silence, sir. Burke, don't you think the Japanese know by now where we are? To Admiral Rockwell Torrey, may success follow your flag. You're here. You're here. You're here. I do thank you, and I'm grateful. Admiral, with your permission, sir, to our country, our Navy, and all the best things they stand for. Here, 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 here. I was brave. Some of the moments that we remember best from those pictures are about leave time, when everybody was trying to crowd a life's worth of love and excitement into a handful of hours or days, because that's all the time there was, and maybe all the good time there ever would be. I guess the question you men want answered is, are we climbing a gangplank this morning? Well, you're going to get a break. You've got 24 hours leave. We were coming anyway. Feels better having girls in here. Yeah, it smells a lot better than just soldiers. Hello, Miss Laverne. Miss Lola Laverne. Woo! Is this the face that launched a thousand ships? Yeah. Yeah, it's Joe, all right. Come on right over. Bartender, bring them brews. Hey, you get those brows. Did I get them? They'll be right over. Hey. But remember, you guys, lay off my personal babe. She's mine. Where did you see this number? She's as good as she looks. Come on, I'll get you back to Thank you, Harry. Don't worry. 
so you want to see movie stars. Me, I can't get into the Hollywood canteen. You, you got on your ticket, your uniform, and they got good food, too. Where is the canteen? Well, you just cut right through to Sunset Boulevard. You can't miss it. Thanks, I will. Yourself, I'm getting corn for my country at the Hollywood canteen. The hardest working junior hostess you've ever seen. I'm doing my bit down here for Uncle Sam. I'm a patriotic jitterbug. Yeah, yeah, that's what I am. Honey, I'm gonna dish your hip right out of this socket. Oh, please! I beg your pardon, young man. But exactly what did you say you were going to do with Miss Andrews' sockets? Dance her out of them, Mr. Green Street. See, Sidney, doesn't that constitute mayhem? Definitely, Peter. And, and besides, it would be very gruesome. Horrible sight. Now, look, gentlemen, it's only a figure of speech. You know, like you'll say, you'll tear a guy limb from limb. You wouldn't really tear a guy limb from limb. <laughs> huh? Wouldn't we? <laughs> I see a lot of trouble ahead for you, Charlie. Yeah, but I think it's worth it. <laughs> yes? Did anybody ever tell you you look like Joan Crawford? Well, yes, my husband has. You're Barbara Stanwyck. How can you tell? Because you look like you look, only more so than I thought. That must be a wonderful feeling for a soldier, to know there's somebody waiting for him. Yeah. Especially a wife. A wife? Look, honey, what could I offer you as the wife of a soldier? A home, any kind of life together? Just the right to write me letters. You have that now. But, Johnny... Look, honey, we've been going together since we were kids. We can wait for marriage a little while longer. Much as I love you, that's just not for us right now. You mean we're not going to get married before you leave? No, honey. And I know that's best. So I'll have fun. I'll sing and dance with the soldiers and kiss them all goodbye. But I can wait. You've got to be selfish. You've only got one life. You just can't call off marriage because there's a war on. It's got to work. Oh, look, Alice, we can't wait. We mustn't. It wouldn't be right. Oh, John, sure. We'll never be more sure, don't you see? We might never have found one another no, again. Don't say that. I've got to say it. Look, please. Please, will you marry me?
got something you didn't have 12 years ago. Well, goodbye. Don't say goodbye. It's G.I. to say so long. I know, and I keep forgetting. So long. Write to me, Eve. I will. Oh, what's your name? <laughs> George Clark. Fort Benning, Georgia. For a while, anyway. Gee, I'm glad we bumped into each other, Georgie. And how? Thanks for everything, Eve. And I wasn't lonesome anymore in San Francisco. That was the whole idea. Eddie! Oh, Catherine. Oh, I was so afraid I wouldn't get to see you. And... Oh, there's so much to say. Don't say anything. Just come back. I have to. There'll be a girl back here wearing my ring. Won't there? Goodbye, honey. Goodbye, dog face. I'm afraid it's time. This is familiar territory, Bill. Our life seems to be made up of farewell scenes. But there was something missing in the others. Something like this. Goodbye, Hillary. Goodbye, Bill. reporting on the domestic front. As the United Nations march on the steady road to victory, the shortage of commodities for civilian consumption increases. Today, everything from vegetables to girdles is being rationed. We see a great nation buckling down cheerfully to rationing of meat, heat, shoes, booze, rubber, blubber. Your host, Brenda Vaccaro. A in the alphabet of wartime, stood for a measly three gallons of gas a week, if your filling station still had any. All of a sudden, almost overnight, there were absences of everything. Seats on buses, trains and airplanes, even shoe leather. Two new pairs of shoes a year was the allotment, and life was measured by coupons and points in ration books. The movies tried to lighten the load with a few laughs at the overcrowding and at the alphabet soup of bureaucratic Washington. It's about rationing. I've got a complaint to make. Uh, <clears throat> well, the OPA takes care of the complaints. You'll find that on E. Ask the FBI and the WPB. Uh, Department J. Oh, uh, just beyond HOLC. You won't have any trouble finding it because it's just across the street from WMPC. You get it? Yes, yeah, I've got it. OPA, FBI, HOLC. You're next, please. See, you manufacture bed springs. No, I manufacture toys. Toys. Excuse me, Mr. Pearson. That's GB. This is MS. FDR wants you. Okay. Sorry, Pearson. I've got to run to the White House. My name is Mr. Pearson. It's Stevens. Stevens of the Todd Toy Company. Well, can I see you again tomorrow? Same to you, Pearson. It's mutual. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. I wouldn't even know where to suggest you to go. Lee Stevens. Lee Stevens. Those reservations were canceled. Canceled. I didn't cancel them. Your secretary did. My secretary? Yes. She objected to the accommodations. The rooms weren't large enough, and there was no bath. Well, never mind that. I'll, I'll take them. I'm sorry, sir. I've already given those rooms to Prince Stormberg of Malabar. He doesn't require a bath. 
Do you know General Marshall? No. Well, the general wired me. Sergeant Gilman, he said, that's me. Just use my name. Now, what my friends will need is a little sweep. High up, afternoon sun, a nice view of the ocean. I know exactly what you mean. Would it do you any good in 1947? Why, the general would be... 1947? Do you know Admiral King? With all these points and things to bother about, Ben, I wish you'd tell me how my husband and I could get a good dinner. That is very simple. First of all, you take a steak away from a Marine down in Guadalcanal and uh, you cook it with some potatoes. It should go to one of the Coast Guardmen on the Aleutian Islands. Then you add some fresh vegetables from the mess of our troops down in northern Africa and add a couple of pounds of butter that you were going to send to some sailors on a submarine with two cups of coffee that belongs to an aviator in the South Pacific. Attention, everybody. Attention. The winner date contest is about to begin on the main platform. The man who has the most pleasures wins the date with Julie Hampton, famous Broadway star. Hey, could you fellows cough up a little more dough if Miss Hampton gives away a kiss with every purchase? No, wait a minute. Suppose I could borrow a welding mask? You hear that? That's the voice of the people. Sounds more like the call of the wild. Quiet, quiet. Lady at work. This is going to hurt me more than it'll hurt you. All right, everybody. First come, first serve. Thank you, Carl. This is no time to say you've done enough This is the time to really do your stuff And even if you can't be a soldier in the ranks You can be the guy to help supply the guns and planes and tanks This is the time for you to do your best this is no time for you to take a rest. The enemy is reeling and his morale is low. So now's the time to fall in line and deal the final blow. Bye, 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 buy a bond. Buy a bond. And by and by, the bonds you buy will bring you victory. Bye, 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 buy a bond. Buy a bond. And you'll be standing by the victory arch When Johnny comes marching home again Oh, you should need no request For after all, you know that you're investing in the best Till the lads come back again Back the old attack again And bye, bye, bye Are you a patriotic American? Yes, sir Eager to do your part? Yes, sir Then there's something important you can do you won't get a medal for doing it. Oh, that's all right. It may mean a sacrifice on your part. I'll do it anyway. But it will be a vital help to your country I'll in this hour of need. Shall I tell you what it is? Yes, what is it? Tell me. Shall I? Tell me what it is. Your income tax. Income tax? Yes, your income tax. Your income tax. Your country is at war. Your country needs taxes for guns, taxes for ships, taxes for democracy, taxes to beat the Axis. Oh, boy! Taxes to beat the Axis! That's the spirit. You marched away and left this town as empty as can be. And I am like the driftwood in a deadly calm at sea. I can't sit under the apple tree with anyone else but me. There was still a difference between the discomforts of home and the realities of combat. The greatest shortage of all on the home front, of course, was men. They're either too young or too old. They're either too gray or too grassy green. The pickings are poor and the crop is lean. What's good is in the army. What's left will never harm me. 
They're either too old or too young So darling, you'll never get stung Tomorrow I'll go hiking with that Eagle Scout Unless I get a call from Grandpa For a snappy game of chess They're either too warm or too cold They're either too fast or too fast a sea So darling, believe me, I'm yours to keep There isn't any gravy The gravy's in the Navy It's beginning to get me down You put in eight hours a day at the shipyard Then go out and dance with strange guys every night I feel like I'm lending my four freedoms away. Before I gave up teaching school for welding, I never danced with anything but a chemistry prof. Ever danced with a chemistry prof? No chemical reaction. But you never know. I still may meet the guy. After all, I'm getting on. I'm not like you two. I can't wait for the war to be over. We get everything we could possibly want. And don't tell Fidelia, but the grub is wonderful. I'm gaining a pound a week. And if it doesn't stop soon, they'll have to make me a general just for appearances sake. That's all for tonight, except... Except for what, Mother? <laughs> the, the rest is to me. Joe's a nice boy. He's just lonesome, that's all. He's never been oh, to Oh, your... so it's Joe already. Joe what? Joe, you don't know. Oh, look, Al. I know you're old enough to take care of yourself, and I don't want to butt into your affairs. But it just doesn't make sense to pick up a... to make friends with a stray soldier. I, I know, they're all swell kids. But a girl has got to look out for herself. Here comes the bride, here comes the bride. La 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 la. Welcome home, Mrs. Stewart. <laughs> I'm sorry we couldn't find the right words to the song, but you know how we feel. Yes, Pop. Sure pulled a fast one, didn't you? I hope it works out. Thanks, Cal. Of course it'll work out if the everything works out. And if you want any advice about anything, just ask me. I will. My sympathies, war widow. Now we can keep each other company. What kind of a man is it who will talk a girl into an overnight marriage knowing he's going off to war? Didn't it ever occur to him that you may never see each other again? It occurred to both of us. I know I'll see him again. You got some special kind of magic you sprinkled him? Don't you think there are millions of girls who want to know their guys are coming back? Don't you think I wanted Freddie back once? Once? Don't you now? Sure I do. But don't you realize you can forget how a man really looks and talks and makes love? I'll get by as long as I have you. Though there be rain and darkness too, I'll not complain. Poverty may come my way, that's true, but what can I say I'll get by as long as I The war produced dozens of songs, but one song and one voice more than all the others summed up the simple hope of peace. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas Just like the ones I used to know 
where the treetops glisten and children listen to hear sleigh bells in the snow. I'm dreaming of a white Christmas with every Christmas card I write May your days be merry and bright And may all your Christmases be wild I'd like to get at him. What's the rush? This is a nice place. Yeah, they're breaking at 11. Breaking at 11. I got him. Yeah. I got those two at 2 o'clock. Too fat at 6 o'clock up. Coming in. Diving out, Chief. He said he's in trouble out at 2 o'clock. Watch him. Got an engine on fire. Watch him, Scotty. I got my sights on him. Check it. B-17, Chuck. 3 o'clock. Motor smoking. Fighter at 10.30 coming around. Those 10.30 upper or lower? B-17 out of control at 3 o'clock. Come on, you guys, get out of that plane. Bail out. There's one. He come out of the bomb bay. Yeah, I see him. There's a tail gunner coming out. Watch out for fighters. Six, eight, nine. How many did the 329th put up this morning? 36, I think it was, sir. Nine. Ten. Eleven. I make it eleven. So do I. How many do you have in a squadron? Twelve. It was a squadron. That isn't the remains of a group, is it, Casey? That was the whole group, sir. Eleven out of thirty-six. That's almost seventy percent. These are eight men we knew and liked. Guys like us. Guys we ate with and slept with and fought with. Well, we... just a little luckier than they were. We'll miss them. All of them. Gunner's mate, first class, Michael A. Hearn. Gunner's mate, second class, Frank Rossetti. Apprentice seaman, Morris Goldberg. Able seaman, George Anderson. Able seaman, William Wodinski, Able Seaman John Murphy, Able Seaman Henry Bone, and uh, Cadet Ezra Parker. But wherever the war was and the battle raged, its last long mournful echo was heard back home. Who is it for? Mrs. Rose Sandoval, 1129 G Street. Are you Mrs. Sandoval? Oh. oh. Please, please come in. I, uh, I, I cannot read the English. Uh, what does the telegram say? It says... Please open the telegram. Read it for me. Who sent the telegram? My son, Juan Domingo. It's... It's from the War Department. says that your son is dead, Mrs. Sandoval. Maybe it was somebody else. The telegram says it was Juan Domingo. Maybe the telegram is wrong. I, I hope so, Mrs. Sandoval. 